One of the tedious habits of flat earthers in reaction to my videos is posing out of the blue the question What evidence do you have the earth is a spinning ball? Or even worse Enjoy your spinning earth sci-fi fantasy cult while you still can Bwahahaha In the meantime giving themselves a thumbs up The bwahahaha thing seems to me the first thing flat earthers have learned at the flat earth mindfuck school as is the thumbs up your own question thing I could react by referring them to sites where surveyors explain their work to the Sanyak experiment and to the Foucault pendulum but I know that they don't bother to look at the surveyors websites because it involves a little mathematics and they try using the Sanyak experiment as proof of a flat earth and they attempt to debunk the Foucault pendulum with pseudoscience I recently stumbled on a video of Mr. Thrive and Survive him again where he thinks he is debunking the Foucault pendulum by introducing the Ale effect an effect he seems to think he is the only one that has ever heard about all over the internet you can find flat earth statements like sometimes they rotate clockwise and sometimes counterclockwise sometimes they fail to rotate and sometimes they rotate far too much and if the alleged constant rotation of the earth affected pendulums in any way then there should be no need to manually start pendulums in motion if the earth's rotation caused the 360 degree, degree uniform rotation of pendulums then there should not exist a stationary pendulum anywhere on the earth this last one was of Eric Dubé, one of the other con men in the Flat Earth Society. And then there's the Ale effect. In Flat Earth articles described as There are documented cases of erratic changes in the pendulum's movement during solar eclipses, indicating that the spinning Earth had no involvement in the pendulum's change. This in itself is a false statement, but let's see what Mr. Thrive and Survive has to say about it. <laughs> they don't sound like they're logically connected. In any case, the paradox of Alias, uh, Alias effect, I'm going to pronounce it that way unless I'm told otherwise. I want to leave, read you the last paragraph, and I'm going to have a link to all this I show you below. All right, and uh, except for maybe that video behind me where it's showing the pendulum going around. Uh, that's where they indoctrinate you at the mall and show you, oh, see how this is working? It's working because the earth is spinning underneath of it. That's why. Oh, yeah, that's why. Let's be brain dead. Let's go get our cornflakes and go home. I'm going to read you the last paragraph of this. It's entitled The Paradox of Elias Effect. Indeed, having been tricked by Elias Paradox myself, now I have to explain what it is. Guess what happens during a solar eclipse? And what I found is, I now don't have good documentation on it yet, but also during a lunar eclipse. I can't say too much about that yet because I'm early in my research on the lunar part of it. But during solar eclipses, you will find the Elias effect. And everybody's going to run to Wikipedia. And if you didn't see my last video where I talked about the nonsense of Wikipedia, they've got something wrong about this too. Some scientists in the 1900s discovered this effect. Wrong. It was discovered in the 1800s. Oh, but you should see the explanation they have on Wikipedia for this. I'll get to that. <laughs> Talk about laughing at, at ridiculousness. Guys, if you don't, when you want to tell you what the explanation for the Elias effect is, and you don't see through that that it's hogwash, I'm sorry, there's no help for you. Just go back to watching SpongeBob and, and anything else that has pictures of globes in it and, and stuff like that. All right? Just, just do it. So, the Elias effect, they've noticed that supposedly at the North Pole, although I'll bet you there's never been a pendulum taken to the North Pole, uh, the pendulum will turn 360 degrees in one day. 
at the equator, it doesn't turn at all. wonder why. The Earth is still spinning, but it doesn't turn at all. But anyway, the closer you get to the equator, the less it spins. Let's say in North America somewhere, it spins 270 degrees in one day. It doesn't spin the whole 360. Once you get below the equator, south of the equator, it spins again and then gets, I guess, if you ever got to the South Pole, which nobody ever does, it would be 360 degrees again in theory. So they say it's the Coriolis effect and the spinning of the Earth, right? Couldn't be caused by anything else. Couldn't be caused by the rotation of the stars around us and maybe the magnetic fields of those and or the planets and sun and moon going around also. Nah, couldn't be that. That would require some thinking. It's easy just to say, oh, Copernic, what's his name? Copernicus, uh, Copernia, Copernicus. Oh, yeah, Copernicus, that's who. He said that we go around the sun, so we have to believe that. So, now you know what the Elias effect is, sort of. During a solar eclipse, guess what? If it's supposed to move, let's say, 10 degrees in so much time, 10 degrees in 30 minutes. Instead, it moves 5 degrees in 30 minutes, or 20 degrees in 30 minutes, or 25 degrees. It takes about 4 minutes for him to give a hugely exaggerated description of the Ale effect, after having ranted about the indoctrination of a spinning earth, being brain dead, him not having enough documentation, Wikipedia being wrong, Spongebob, the North Pole where there never was a pendulum, the pendulum not moving at the equator and not understanding why, the South Pole where the, there never was anybody, although the experiment with the pendulum at the South Pole w in the winter of 2001 is fully documented, the false statement that the rotation of the pendulum is attributed to the Cori Coriolis effect, and Copernicus. He suggests that it is widely established, confirmed and totally dismissed by regular science. And he is talking about the Al Ale paradox. Another indication that he doesn't have a clue what he is talking about. The Ale paradox is another thesis Ale formulated. It is about the way people make decisions when confronted with uncertainties, an entirely different topic. I've shown you the entire fragment to demonstrate what a disturbed person Mr. Thrive and Survive is. The Ale effect is called after Maurice Allais, who discovered this effect in 1954, more than a century after Foucault's invention. He was a Frenchman, hence the pronunciation, Allais. Mr. Thrive and Survive, who blames other people not doing proper research, hadn't even found that out. After that, Scientists have attempted to recreate this experiment, with some claiming success and others reporting no changes in the pendulum movement. Among them, Thomas Goody, with his portable one meter long pendulum, also Professor René Vero of Quebec is working on this problem, with an 8 to 12 meter long wire with an elliptical bob at the end, or Professor Alexander Pukac of the Ukraine Academy of Science, who uses a torsion balance. The results of measurements done at the solar eclipse of August 1, 2008 in Sukjava, Romania, with a Goody pendulum and a traditional wire pendulum, and in Kiev, Russia, with a torsion balance, are documented. The observations in Kiev show slight disturbances during the eclipse and the major disturbance at the two hours after T4, the end of the eclipse. Also, the disturbances were in different di directions for the different torsion balances. The researchers couldn't give an explanation for these differences. They had never encountered such an abrupt deviation correlated over multiple devices, not even at observations on other days when the angular distance between sun and moon was only a few degrees. The results 
of the eclipse in Rum Romania with the Goody pendulums were also ambiguous. While the precession of the manually operated pendulum started to decrease after the eclipse maximum, the precession of the automated operated pendulum increased gradually. The erratic behavior of both pendulums could be explained by the fact that they weren't exactly the same. Also there was a strong influence due to the torque regulator that is supposed to counteract eccentric releases. Lastly, the swing times of these pendulums is restricted, restricted to 10 minutes, so they have to be restarted again and again, increasing the effect of the torque regulator. The Goody pendulum is by the way a needlessly complicated contraption and in my opinion far too short to be dependable in the first place. The results of the traditional pendulum were conclusive. During the eclipse the pendulum behaved in a very stable manner. Only after the eclipse a small increase of the precession rate took place, followed by a small decrease. The researchers conclude, in my view a little bit too firmly, given the above, the authors consider that is, it is an inescapable conclusion from our experiments that after the end of the visible eclipse, as the moon departed the angular vicinity of the sun, some influence exerted itself upon the eastern European region, so there definitely seems to be something going on there although the effect couldn't be seen on other days with the moon at similar angular distances. This is one of very few publications about this subject, and it is certainly not an indication that the precession of the Foucault pendulum is not evidence of the rotation of the Earth. But that's all Mr. Thrive and Survive has to offer in terms of debunking. A couple of rare anomalies that occur in a sensitive mechanical instrument. That's as if your car breaks down now and then and conclude that cars aren't able to bring a person from A to B. He ignores the well documented characteristics of the pendulum and the consistent way it behaves with only a few rare exceptions. A couple of students performed the following experiment. They tried to establish their latitude and their distance to the North Pole using the Foucault pendulum. Given this latitude, we can find our distance to the North Pole using a little trigonometry and the radius of the Earth. For the latitude we measured, the North Pole should be 4,470 kilometers away. This is only 167 kilometers off the measured distance. I'm actually really surprised at how close we came to the actual value. Imagine how accurate we could be if we ran the pendulum for many hours straight. This experiment is successful because the degree of rotation per day is proportional to the sign of the latitude, and it is so every day of the week. This can't be explained by another model than of a spherical Earth. Also, it is no wonder that the pendulum sometimes rotates clockwise and sometimes counterclockwise. Its direction is dependent on whether you are in the northern hemisphere, clockwise, or in the southern hemisphere, counterclockwise. At the equator it doesn't rotate at all, which makes perfect sense, although Mr. Thrive and Survive doesn't seem to understand it. 
This again is evidence for a spherical Earth and can't be explained with electromagnetic forces or other exotic ex assertions that can be found among flat earthers. And it does most certainly make no sense in the flat earth model, where north and south are on the same plane. And all of this, despite of the dismissive way Mr. Thrive and Survive pronounces Foucault's pendulum. Yeah, that's right, Foucault's pendulum. I'm going to talk about that today. That face only shows that he's just an actor, a snake oil peddler that's using his pseudoscience to sell his spray bottles of colloidal silver. <laughs>